Hey there everyone, please forgive my hoarse voice as I did only just get my voice back. Um, if you follow me on Instagram you would know that I lost my voice for about a week for who knows why. But anyway, um, today's tutorial. Today's video is going to be a makeup tutorial and this isn't going to be a regular tutorial as this is going to be a step-by-step -step talk through. There'll be no voiceovers or anything as this is a video that is more dedicated to technique rather than the overall look. So this is going to be a smoky eye that focuses on techniques you can use if you have hooded eyes or small eyes like myself. Um, over the years you may have noticed that both my eyes are completely different. Um, this one is more hooded than this one. Um, this one, as I lost weight, seems to have opened up a bit more of a eyelid, but this one never kind of did. Like I said, this is going to be a tutorial, a step-by-step walkthrough of a smoky eye for those of you who have small eyes, almond eyes and hooded eyes and techniques to help you open up your eyes and not make them look as bunched up I guess. Um, it's one of the things that I deliberately try to avoid every day when I put on my makeup is to stop that bunching feeling of the eyelid and everything. So the palette that I'm going to be using within this is going to be the Sourcebox Etude palette which is is my go-to naturals kind of palette and it's pretty basic but it does the job and I love this palette to death as you can tell. This is my second one and I abuse this. Brushes you will need is one or two fluffy blending brushes. If you've only got one, um, have a tea towel or something on the side just so you can rub off the colour. If you have the colour switch thingo then that is brilliant, that works better. But for those of you like myself who don't have that, um, yeah just a tea towel can do the trick. With blending brushes, I have a few here that I highly recommend. The first, I love this brush, although I don't recommend this brand. This is Spectrum Collections, and I've had a really bad problem with all my Spectrum Collections brushes and their ferrules coming loose um, relatively quickly. It shouldn't be like that, and I know how to clean my brushes. The water never, ever, ever goes past there so it's not like water gets in and weakens the glue um, so I think it's just a really bad glue poorly constructed but a great brush this one is a synthetic brush I got from of all places Rose Gal and it is synthetic hair the set was only seven dollars and it works actually quite brilliantly this brush is by my favorite brush brand, which is um, Furless Cosmetics. And yeah, I just absolutely adore all their brushes. I've been using this for about three years now and it is in still perfect condition. And then the one that you can probably access the easiest is the Real Techniques one. And this is part of the eye kit. My favorite brush that Real Techniques has ever made. Um, I'm not a huge fan of their face brushes, but their eye brushes are amazing. So the first thing I recommend you do, especially to stop the dreaded crease lines and stuff as eyeshadow settles into the eye creases and fine lines, primer. The three eye primers that I typically use is one, the Australis eye primer, which I think is only available in Australia, um, but that one's very, very affordable at $14 Australian. Um, the second is the Too Faced Shadow Insurance. This one's quite steep in Australia. I think this one goes for about $38 Australian. And the other one of which I think is packed in one of my bags for Germany. And that is the Urban Decay Primer Potion, which is my all time favorite. That one um, I think is nearly 40 or around $40 Australian. It's a bit steep, but it really does. It lasts about six to eight months of regular use and it works the best. A couple of the primers I really, really do not recommend, especially for those of us with hooded eyes, 
um, as everything tries to settle within the fine lines. And if you have oily lids like myself, I do not recommend the Chi Chi eye primer. Um, that one is horrid. Shadow does not last very long with that. Before I went vegan, I tried the Painterly paint pots and stuff, um, Painterly and Soft Ochre. Absolute horror products for oily eyelids. They just, no, horrid products. And another primer I really do not recommend for people with oily eyelids um, is the Kat Von D eye primer. I just... I, I love Kat Von D products and I, I idolize the woman, but no, that product did not work for me. Moving on past primer, the first thing I will do is add a transition shade to the crease just so we know exactly where the crease is and if you really like that colour you can go back and add more and, and also use that colour to blend out the darker colours later on. So now that our eyes are primed and I've explained primers, I'm moving on and I'm going to be taking a transition shade and I'm going to just apply that as kind of like a guideline and making a new crease. Um, you'll see what I mean in a moment. And I'm going to apply that not just in that little creasing area, but I'm going to take it just above because it's kind of like creating a new shadow, um, the illusion of a higher crease or an exposed crease. And with that, I'm going to take that right in to this inner corner area, not that harshly, just to give more natural shadow to the area. So now you see I've only done one eye. They look quite even now, um, even though this one is significantly more hooded than this one. So with this one, I'm going to take it a little bit lower than the other, just to give the appearance of more symmetrical features. I always recommend starting off with, particularly if you have uneven eyes, um, starting off with the eye that is the most closed or the harder to work with. The one that you want to alter the most because it leaves a guide point for the amount of alteration or you know stuff that you want to do with the other eye. As with this one, I could, I could see exactly where the crease on this one now exists as opposed to, you know, accidentally moving this one up and down a little bit too far and then completely ruining this eye. So like I said, I always recommend starting off with the eye you want to change the most. And then just with that same color, I take a little bit onto the lower lash line area. So this lower lash line area can really change up your eye shape as well. If you have almond eyes like myself and you want them to appear more open, um, really avoid making the outside heavy. You've got to make your eyes very center, even slightly off center towards the middle balanced. If you have close set eyes, so eyes that are less than an eye distance in between, close together, sorry, um, then balance it more towards this side because it then drags your eyes outwards. If you have very wide set eyes then think of traditional um, death rock makeup, how it's very um, inward based, um, meeting up the eyebrows, it, it really brings the eyes back in. It's all about changing people's perception of everything with new shadows and new shapes and stuff, so it's, it's kind of like a magic of some form. So like I said, with almond eyes, make sure that it's quite central balanced or just all round balanced if you really like to, um, if you want to uh, play and accentuate the shape of your almond eyes. I personally like to do that, so I make it very, very even and I 
typically leave the inner corners blank um, and put a light shade in there just because I want to open my eyes up later on. Sometimes I just like to leave the look right here because I like the look of this. It's quite undead looking. And then I just go back with another blending brush, a clean blending brush, just kind of blur out any lines that may exist. So now from here you can do a few different types of smoky eye. You can do um, a very popular one on Instagram where you start with a slightly lighter shade of brown and then make your way across to a very dark brown or black. You can also do another one which is my personal favourite, the lightest shade in the centre of your eyelid area and then the darker shades on the inner corner and the outer corner. That really helps to open the eyes right up. Today I'm going to be doing the type of smoky eye that suits any eye shape, although it can be difficult with um, hooded and almond eyes as the lid shade tends to be hidden, but that is why I created a new false crease that was a bit higher on this eye because I'm going to bring the darkest shade, which is black in this case, and I'm going to bring that above the um, regular natural folding of the eyelid just so it is seen. I'm just taking that black with a flat shader brush and I'm going to apply that all over the eyelid area. Firstly, I'm going to show you um, the difference if I take this up to the, where my natural creases are and I'm going to show you the difference between the eyes before we make the corrections. So this is my eyes unblended and as you can see if I didn't create that new crease line my eyes would probably look very very strange. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do from this point is to add more colour above the crease on this eye um, to even out the amount on both eyes. This one will probably end up with a little bit more than this one just because it needs a lot more correction, um, but they will end up looking as symmetrical as I can possibly get them. So this is just meeting the crease that I created earlier on this eye, and as you can see it makes a world of difference. I'm just going to now take that black onto the lower lash line and I'm going to follow through to about three quarters of the way. And now blend. It is at this point where, when both eyes look quite symmetrical, this is where I go back and add more black or other colours, stuff like that, because I'm at a point where they are exactly the same, so I can, um, I can change it more evenly from this point. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. I like a more dramatic, dark, smoky eye, so I'm going to go put a bit more black, I'm going to blend it up towards my brows a bit more, um, but 
You get the idea. So from here you can go and add more browns and naturals or bring back your transition shade so it's more prominent, um, but I'm quite happy with how this looks, um, although I'm going to add some of the white to my inner corner. I'm going to just add a tiny little bit to my brow bone as well. So from here I usually add either white or black liner to my waterline. White will really open up the eyes and brighten them and black will give you that more sultry dark look which is kind of what I'm going for today so I'm going with black liner. Now something that I noticed that happens, particularly when you've got the same kind of colour scheme going on with the lower lash line eyeshadow and the waterline, is that there is like a slight separation of where the colours should meet. Um, I'll see if I can show you what I mean. So right there along the lashes where the lashes kind of grow out of my body um, there's like this area that you can't seem to get the eyeliner and the shadow to meet so what I do to correct this particular phenomenon is I take a small precision brush and then the eyeliner and kind of just get it on there and then push into it to seal that gap and make everything a bit more seamless. So from here it's just a matter of doing eyeliner and lashes and lipstick and then the look is complete. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and I will be back. I'm back and the look is now completed and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough tutorial. I don't usually do tutorials like this because I find that doing the voiceovers allows me to concentrate more on the makeup. However, I decided to do the walkthrough with this particular tutorial because it is more of an instructive nature. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because I'd love to be here for every single video. Like this video if you liked this tutorial or you found it helpful. Comment down below if there's something you'd like to see on this channel. Also, let me know if you thought this was helpful and if there's any other walkthroughs that you would like to see. And I hope you all have a fantabulous day.